Oh my gosh, you guys did incredible. And Chris, I know uh, that was a little out of your comfort zone, but man, you crushed it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, nice job. You guys both did amazing. Uh, that, uh, that's the story, man. And our story, real, uh, really quick, I, I get to introduce our next speaker, and it is a privilege to hear from this gentleman. Um, you know, my wife and I, uh, we recently uh, got a new car, thanks to the longevity. And uh, it's something, thank you, yeah. Thank you so much. And it's really cool, guys, because we're, you know, we're a family, we've got a little one, and uh, our car just kind of crapped out over the last <laughs> couple months. I mean, it just, the, the engine was just, it was ready to give up, and it did. And uh, so, so we got rid of it, right? And uh, you guys know that CarMax buys cars, whatever condition. Okay, so any condition they'll buy the car. <laughs> so if you want to know how much they offered us for this car? <laughs> yes. Yes. Over under, James? What? Over under. Give me an over under. Just, just throw out a number. Thousand dollars. Under. <laughs> Nailed it. Farmer Glenn got it. We got $500 for this, for this, for this car. Um, so we're thinking, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> we should have given another car with $500. Um, and it's that, it that very same month that Nikki was like, hey, uh, I think we're really close to the car on this. And we checked and we started looking some things out, and it turns out we were. And, uh, and so we, we earned that car bonus, and uh, now we've got a nice little Toyota out there. So, um, so it's, it's just super cool, right? So that's our story. Um, I need to introduce our next speaker. And you guys, um, Oh my gosh, this is so cool to hear from this gentleman. So he reminds me of Tony Robbins. His resume is incredible. Like it's it's so cool because he is a mentor to mentors. Um, this this guy has has such an incredible resume. Um, he's a he's a former Navy veteran. So um, served our country, and uh, he actually went to work. Uh, he's owned small businesses and things like that before entering the corporate world. And he worked for IBM. Okay. So you guys heard of IBM, um, and he's what he did at IBM was was mentor the mentors. So he worked with the CEOs, the leadership of companies like Procter and Gamble, Boeing, huge companies, and he would work with them and help them turn around. So large, small companies all up to large companies. That was this guy's role. Um, and he got out of that in 2002. Um, he focused his life on building sales teams. Built corporate sales teams. He got a network marketing 17 years ago, and this guy has just an incredible, incredible life story. And he's going to be talking to us today about never giving up. So, I want, without further ado, I want to introduce actually one more important piece. Um, he's a family man. So, this guy, um, he told me he's a grandfather today. He doesn't look like a grandfather. He uh, he's he's young. He's chipper. He's got seven kids and two grandkids. A wonderful wife. Just an incredible man to to learn from and soak up and absorb. So without further ado, Mr. Mark Schulman, will you please come on. So it's been a while since I had the privilege of speaking quite often. And last night, I just put this up on top of the text me. He goes, hey, Mark, will you, will you talk for me today? And I was getting ready to stop. Uh, our fifth child uh, had an honors graduation at CSU yesterday, and so uh, I got to leave for New Orleans in the morning, uh, and California a couple days later in Florida, and so I wasn't about to tell Tom that I couldn't. Oh, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Okay. So um, did you hear what I said before? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, I just didn't do anything for me, so I had to uh, try to put something together. So this uh, presentation here. I personalized something that I put together a long time ago uh, that I've taught executives over the years. And so I put a lot of things about myself in there and my family. Uh, and so I'm going to try to do my best to keep it short uh, just to, so that everybody can kind of stay on track. Uh, but hopefully I'll be able to, if, if there's enough time at the end, I'll get into some deeper stuff. So go ahead and hit the, hit the first uh, slide. So my dad, uh, he was a Marine uh, pilot. And uh, and then also he was at Parker Gable, and so we moved a lot. I've lived in probably 22 states, a few countries, between what he did and then me going into the Navy and then being at IBM, just left everywhere. But as a kid, going to a new school almost every year, uh, it was intimidating to me. Um, how many of you all have moved a lot or just, you know, is anybody here just grown up in one area the whole time? Okay. Well, it was really scary just walking into a schoolyard with, you know, 
having to tell everybody about myself and stuff. So the first, you know, the first few years, I hated that. But after a while, I started living like the Australians do. You know, strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. And so it really helped. But as a child, um, my mom and dad got divorced when I was seven, and then she moved from, we moved from Southern California to the East Coast. And her husband, that, that the guy she moved in with, was her high school sweetheart from like 15 years earlier. He um, had since lost his mind. She didn't know it. And so he used to try to kill her. And I was eight years old, and I'd fight her off. I'd fight him off, trying to protect her. But he would say stuff like, when I catch you, I'm going to cut your head off, hanging over the fireplace by, by your hair, and watch the blood drip down. And, and I had a little brother who was one. And, I, and so I had to protect both of us as best I could. And it just wasn't fun. But the reason I'm telling you these things is because the, the overlying theme for all this is going to be forgiveness. Because, you know, people who go through bad situations, you got two choices. You can either forgive and move on, or you can just be angry, relive everything you went through. So everything that I've had happen, I'll just take it and move on. So, um, but the adversity became easy to deal with, and then confrontations were really, you know, like right now, Joel, if you came up here and stood right in my face and yelled at me because you're upset about something, you wouldn't even raise my blood pressure. I'd say, let's figure out the problem, you know, and you know, what is it? And I diffused it. And so I would teach executives that type of skill because most people, they're afraid of confrontation big time. So anyway, uh, but the people skills that I've learned paid off pretty well in, in the graduate um, so that I was the next one. So when I was in the Navy, the top left, that was in Okinawa in 1982. I had a pretty good life, saved up some money, um, you know, had a lot of fun, go ahead and flip to the next one. Um, I got, like, I had some mentors, like, you just, I mean, I, I can't even believe I got to do some of the stuff I got to do. Um, the guy up in the top right, uh, he's the third from the, from the right. Uh, he's one of two friends who spent six years with more at Hanoi Hilton, uh, just to be a pilot, and got shot down. Um, the leadership I learned from him and another one, just you can't, you know, you can't, uh, you can't pay for it. Um, for you Broncos fans, I'm sorry, but that picture on the left, that was January of 88, in Coach Gibbons Hotel, and then we used the Broncos in the Super Bowl. That was one of my favorite times in life, but what it also taught me was that what happens today the worries that we have, nobody's going to care next year. Nobody's going to care the year after because nobody cares about that. Me. Uh, <laughs> uh, John Maxwell, uh, he's been a mentor before Network Marketing do since over 20 years ago. Go ahead. And then the guy on the far right is the mentor that changed my life. He was in the military. He was in World War II. He built the QB Point the Philippines Air Base that I used to fly into. But when I was in trouble in school because I settled into violence, I only had a couple of choices. I could go uh, to a correctional facility or go to this two year, 1100 hour course that teaches you how to be an electrician. So my guidance counselor and I were talking and he chose it. We all walked into that guy's room. There were about 15 of us in the room pushing each other around to see who was going to be the boss of the class. And he walked in and he said, Girls! And we all looked up. He said, any of you or all of you together think you're bad enough to take me on, do it now. None of us did. We were all scared of him. He pulled out a wooden paddle, showed us how he was going to whip us. It had holes in it for a pair of minutes. This is in the 70s, you know. But he said, if you all say anything that I feel necessary, you swear, you do anything that you necessary, then you're at a table and whip your butt. You don't like it, you go home and crack your mom. We all got whipped. He whipped me, you know, tried to me. <laughs> He was kind of why I went to me, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see here. Uh, the top is some of my kids. Uh, my sister in the middle of black and white. She, her, our life has been changed by accidents, car accidents. Um, my sister used to start on the Wonder Years. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Uh, she's my half sister. Um, she um, was standing in a median waiting to cross the street to go to her high school in Burbank. And uh, a, a, a Disney truck ran her over, just it went off, veered into the medium, crushed every bone in her skull. Uh, she wasn't expected to live. Uh, the media called her a miracle girl. And uh, anyway, uh, so she's blind, and she's been blind since that point. Uh, the bottom right picture is, is her on the left, my brother, who's who we have some mother and father, and then another brother that we found. Um, 
that my dad had a relationship with a lady that I just found about a year ago, which was cool, cool, you know, about two years ago. Fred Flipper. This is what I love doing. I love taking my family to Disney World. My dad did it for me, the pictures of the tickets back when Disneyland, uh, when you had tickets like that. I, he'd say that he died a couple years ago, but that's like a 50 year old ticket there. And you know, that was our life. Um, my my uh, the picture of me and my wife and our two youngest in the middle, um, that was in our backyard of our old house in Windsor, right for the next Oh, back up, go back up once. Okay, bottom right, she just graduated on her stuff. She's a fit child. She just, yes, yes, yes. Go ahead and click. Okay, so just two more friends and mentors with my grandkids are at the top left there. And, uh, um, and then bottom right, my favorite global place in, in California. It's called uh, Chuck. And it's in Irvine. If you have to <laughs> okay, so look again. Okay, so the. Again, accidents and other things, but um, that was my view um, in Windsor. And and if you kind of go about two or three miles, you go to where Scott and, and Juliet Far Wills. Um, but you know, we were planning on moving to with my best friend uh, in, in Australia. That's the next picture. That's his backyard. We were to be his neighbor. But one of the companies that I built, uh, a guy stole fifteen million dollars from the partners of me, and four of it was my wife's and mine. And that was the third company I built. I built two other medical companies that got to 100 million. So I did that for my best friend. So they got to like 100 million before their sale. And we were on track to be living in Australia about two years ago. But the guy stole the money and we tried to take him to court. Uh, he, uh, he just went bankrupt. And so that was pretty much it. We used to spend a lot of our money to get treatment for my wife because she was in a pretty bad car accident. And, uh, um, so, you know, we didn't waste a lot of money. I don't really care that much about it. I could make it, but I know that it just comes to go. I've got to give me the ability to do it so I don't hold on to it. So, again, forgiveness. I just forgave that guy, moved on. Wasn't planning on getting in the medical space again, but I did have the opportunity to get into it again. So, I'm building my fault one now uh, and pretty thankful for the opportunity. But go ahead and flip it one more time. So we ended up, we had sold everything we had, cars and everything, and we were going to move to Australia, and now we couldn't. So that view on the left, that was Saturday morning um, from my loft to my house. Sunday morning, that was my view. And that's, I, I don't say, some people, they might say that's that's nice. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not, the, it's not what I was expecting in Australia. But we actually were comfortable in the place and, you know, We'll probably stay there for a year or two longer than we have to if everything, you know, if I'm able to put stuff back together. But again, just it's not about who we are. We don't shouldn't take ourselves too seriously. Go ahead for one more time. Okay. So that happened 10 years ago, and my uh, my wife's head and right shoulder shattered the front right passenger windshield in that uh, that vehicle there. That was that was the thing that really, you know, I've been spending almost nine or ten years just trying to get her out of extreme pain level. So on a scale of one to ten or ten to a barrel, that's about a, she lives in about a nine or ten level pain. We just got some stem cell shots a week or so ago. So we're hoping that'll help. Go ahead and flip it again. So what we've overcome a lot, her second book is called Top Three Scholarship Packing Secrets. And uh, the, uh, that's been getting really good reviews. Um, we would normally take hikes and stuff to try to, you know, for her just to see if she can handle the pain. She dragged me on top of a 14er called Grace Peak. I don't familiar with Grace Peak. Okay. I don't, I'm not a mountain climber. I had, I, it was never on my bucket list. And I don't ever want to do it again. <laughs> she dragged me to, go ahead and wait for me. So, um, this is, this is a slide from, uh, you know, from what I used to teach executives. But I thought it would be pertinent here um, because a lot of us get in our comfort zone. So when you're a business owner, you are just like you you, you don't maybe you use the structure. So all of a sudden you're in your house, you got all kinds of things to do, and you might do the things that you feel comfortable doing, like maybe wash the dishes, vacuum, you know, help out with things. And so at the end of the day, you might feel like you did something, but you really didn't do something to earn money. You need to get on the phone. You need to get knowledgeable about the products. I mean, Longevity is a fantastic company. I know 
about longevity uh, because of a guy named Lance Gordon. Any of you guys heard him on calls? He's been a friend for about 18 years. Um, Tom can't believe that he got me because, not that I'm something special, because you do something once, but you can do it again. But uh, he just can't believe it because we probably bumped into each other at the Ace Hardware at his grocery store you know, over the last probably 20 years, 15, 20 years, something like that. Um, but just, just know that you know, you're going to have to do things that are uncomfortable. And I don't think we're going to have enough time to talk about it in detail, but I'll show you a picture. Um, let me see here. I just want to see if there's anything. Yeah, just to understand, like, getting up here and talking for some people, you know, it's good for you to do it. You know, whether you're talking to two people or if you get an opportunity to talk to a few thousand to do it. Because when you're talking, you know, you're probably thinking if you tripped over a word, you know, like, that's a bad thing. But really, people in the audience are just thinking, I hope this idiot doesn't drop over the time limit or like, what's the lunch or stuff like that. So we're not really going to pay attention to you for 30 minutes. Go ahead and go ahead and flip over. Okay, so this, I don't know if you can see that, but have you, has any of you seen anything like this before? So you know Dan Giddens? Okay, it's not about that. You know, I've worked with him on that probably, I guess it's been, you know, 15, 16 years. But it's really true. So, you know, you want to stay up in the yellow area. You know, risk equals growth. You want to do things, you know, pushing yourself, finding solutions, you know, creating opportunities. Go ahead and scroll to the green side. So. Every time we get hit with a choice, a lot of people are afraid of change. We need to just get excited about it because we don't want to get stuck. You know, if you get stuck, every time you might have to face change and just be afraid, you know, you're going to just avoid things. You're going to, you know, how many people always want to be right? I don't care if I'm wrong. And, and I just, I mean, I'm wrong a lot. And I just say, hey, I'm wrong. I apologize and forget about it. But I know people who freak out, they, they live their life to try to never be wrong. But don't take yourself too seriously. Okay, go ahead and uh, go ahead and flip it, I think. Yeah, I think, go ahead and flip it. No, just go ahead and, uh, yeah. You probably have to zoom back down. Um, and it's okay, I think I just go ahead and talk. How many of you have seen this movie called The Ultimate Gift that you can get on Netflix, I think? Pretty good movie. But those things are the different gifts that they talk about. The gift of work, money, friends, learning, problems, family, laughter, dreams, giving, gratitude, a perfect day, and the gift of love. You know, to me, like I said, all those pictures I showed you, they don't mean anything. They shouldn't mean anything to you all. They only mean something to me. Um, but what I do care about is how I leave this world. You know, I've developed a lot of leaders over my lifetime, been blessed by a lot of leaders. Uh, my mom, one of her, uh, the guy she married, who's been a good stepfather to me, one of the people ran NASA, so I've got a lot of astronauts who've been my mentor. Um, I, I can't believe the life that I've been given, and I've also had a lot taken away. So contentment is is the most important thing between for, you know, forgiveness and contentment. And I'm sorry, you know, business is all about relationships, but think about your relationships, not just in business, Okay, and contact mapping is great because that helps you foster relationships. So hopefully all of you are using contact mapping. But um, just think about your relationship with your spouse, your significant other. You know, when you get into an argument, think about what the argument's about. Is it really worth fighting about? You know, could you just be the one to say, you know what, let's just forget about it. But don't read the day because if you heard Dan give his talk, you might have heard him say, you know, when you are holding bitterness in your heart, you're just drinking poison, waiting for the other person to die. You're not, they don't care. Somebody cut you off. What I used to do, because they didn't call it road rage back then, but you know, back in the 70s and the early 80s, the cars did not lock automatically after 10 miles an hour. So you could pull people out of their cars at stoplights. And so, and, you know, you can't do that. And so, you know, and it was a challenge. But, uh, but really, if you let stuff go, and you just think about how can I be a better spouse? How can I be a better father or mother? You know, and then I used to always wish for happiness for my family, for my kids. That's God didn't even guarantee us to be happy, but we can be content. And so I've lived with abundance and I've lived with almost nothing, you know. And the only thing I really want is for my life to be out there. You know, we live in a big house, a small, actually, we like downsizing. We did it once. 
we're going to do it again. We got my youngest; is, she turned 17 a couple days ago. When Tim and my sister brought this today, um, but we got one more year before empty nesters. And I just, you know, I love the kids, but we want to. So I cannot wait until we get to just travel all the time and not work. They can handle themselves, but we just, you know, we're going to probably get a condo as soon as as soon as we're out. We've gotten rid of. You ever heard anybody heard of Marie Kondo decluttering on Netflix? I would watch that. My wife read that book a few years ago, and we live that way. So you can fit everything into a 20 foot container if you live in Australia. And so I would just say, leave this stuff behind. Don't don't just get cluttered up. It has to with your mind. You live in, in less clutter, and it's going to help you function better as you try to build your business and think in life. So. There's a lot more I could share, but I knew it was going to be short. I really didn't want to go all the way to this point. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and sign off before you say the room. But thanks for your time.